What's poppin' T Sub to T Squad? <clears throat> girl, I don't know what's going on with my voice this morning. Dear Jesus. Anyway, happy Monday to y'all, girl. Um, so before I get up out of here for the day, I definitely had to make sure I get y'all married to Madison child. I ain't need y'all beating down my box for it. Um, love at the lockup is gonna come tomorrow because when I get back this evening, I'm not doing nothing else. All right. I'm watching both love and hip hops. I might turn that into a live. I don't know, but I might just turn it into a live and just review both damn episodes um tonight because I think they both come on tonight. So um I, I might, I might don't go running with that. I might and I might not. Um, I'm just letting y'all know. Y'all, y'all know in doom time. Anyway, <sighs> these damn medicine wives, girl. Um, married to medicine. This is season six, episode five, and axe the grind. So the episode continues where I left off at, and that was with Dr. Karen basically saying to Dr. Eugene, I'm sorry that that bullet hit you, but I honestly went into it as a joke. All right. And to him, it's still a joke. It was funny. And it just is what it is, Eugene. I mean, who are you more mad at? All right. I'm going to tell you who you need to be mad at. You need to be mad at yourself and you need to be mad at your wife. All right. Because I understand, you know, we can't tell people how to take jokes and, you know, and a person has the person that's the butt of the joke has the right to either laugh or not laugh totally on everybody's side with that. However, Eugene and again, much like how y'all say about Dr. Heavily, when it comes to Dr. Contessa, you bought it on the show ever since y'all have been up here. Y'all storyline has been moving. That's what it has been, Dr. Eugene. No shade to you, but that's what it is. That's all you and Toya was given. Move and tease. Y'all move from lily pad to lily pad to lily pad to lily pad. Y'all bought up all of this land, building houses. Now, all of a sudden, this house to y'all land now just got too damn small. I, I'm When I look at the damn house, I, I, I don't see what y'all need with all that much house. But according to your wife, it's too small. It no longer tickles her fancy no more. So now y'all going out, supposedly buying up another plot of land to build another, a uh, bigger damn house. And it's like, what is all of that for? What, who, it's sad because with the way that y'all are doing it, it comes off as if y'all want to be known so damn bad for some reason. It's like where y'all let just isn't good enough. And I just don't understand why. I don't get why y'all feel like y'all have to live above y'all means to prove something to these people. As if where y'all, and I'm not living where y'all at right now. I would love to live where y'all at right now. And I don't, I don't even think it's a y'all thing. I really think it's Toya. And Eugene is you, you just, you just, you, you, you be, you, you being simple. You being real simple. You really are. So don't get mad at Dr. Karen. Get mad at your damn self that y'all made that y'all storyline all this damn time. And now somebody calling y'all out and using it as a joke. And you the butt of everybody joke. Much like he said, everybody around there laughed. Everybody around there thought it was funny. I mean, I'm sorry. It is what it is. Like, I'm won't mad at Dr. Karen. Like, Dr. Karen wasn't about to sit over here and lick your boots. Nigga, fuck you. I said what I said, and it is what it is. I was on Dr. Karen's side with it. Y'all know I live by that. If you did it, say you did it. If you said it, say you said it. It is what it is. But they came to a common ground because they basically had no choice. Dr. Karen said what he said. He felt the way he felt. Oh, well. Eugene had just had to take it for what it is. I mean, hey. Anywho, sitting up there puffing your chest at that man, talk about something, call you another motherfucker. Like, Eugene, you don't intimidate none of them men there. You damn sure didn't intimidate him. Like, nobody there jumped up because they really thought that you was going to do something. You know what I'm saying? It won't a situation like that. All of them was sitting there looking at you stupid. Like, bro, calm down. You're doing way too much. Pull your skirt down, sir. 
you real bothered. Anyway, so they segue into different people's scenes, right? And so Toya was talking to they, her, her two boys, and she going to have a nerve to tell them boys that when they get older, they're going to want a woman like her. And I said, girl, if you don't go and sit your raggedy... Little boys, let me tell you something. You don't want no woman like your mama. If you see a woman like your mama, you head straight for the damn hills. Do you hear me? Please head for the hills. Get the hell up out of Dodge. You understand me? That's what you do. You tiptoe your asses away from her. <laughs> tiptoe her. Tiptoe your asses away from her ghetto fat, progenic, gold digging ass. Like, get away from her. Because let me tell you, your mama was a gold digger. That's really what I get from Toya. No, y'all don't. Y'all don't want a woman like y'all mama. Anyway, so Dr. Heavily brings Dr. Jackie lunch and they invite Dr. Simone around there. So it was all three doctors minus Dr. Katessa having lunch. Um, so apparently Dr. Heavily went on this apology tour. She gave fake apologies to Toya and she gave a fake apology to um, uh, Quad. Um. I don't know if she apologized to you or not. I mean, shit. You, uh, a lot of people say that Dr. Simone is fake, but I really didn't see the fakeness. Like, Dr. Simone was real. Like, wait a minute. I'm totally confused. What's going on here? You already know. It's it's a lot with me and her right now. She called me a fake-ass bitch and all this other type stuff. Like, it's a lot. Like, what's going on, friend? Um, But I get what Dr. Jackie was doing. I, I mean, I get it. And you know what? I let Dr. Jackie have it. Normally, I say you was being messy as hell, Dr. Jackie. <laughs> but I took messy, messy, messy. But I get what you was doing, Dr. Jackie. I mean, you do need some people's help. And I, I mean, why not? For Dr. Simone is your friend. Dr. Heavily is your friend. And Dr. Heavily and Dr. Simone just got to respect the fact that, that they share a common friend. They, It is what it is. Um, so anyway, they were sitting around talking about the Vegas trip and they was planning stuff and this, 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 and yada, yada, yada. And it is what it is. Moving on from that. Um, Anila and the churn bring Dr. Karen Lynch, well, dinner to the office and she brings a big ass bottle of whiskey down to the office. They're God almighty. But you want to know something, Anila? And I, I really do mean this with all disrespect. Use a sorry ass bitch, all right? And use a worthless ass mama if I have ever seen it because you're one of those women that only have children just for the title. You want the title of mom, but you don't want to do the responsibilities and do the task of being a mama. You sitting over there telling him, they're always around me. Well, bitch, I'm more than sh shit. They was up under Miss Gomez for all this damn time, and they probably damn happy to be up under you finally for once for you to be a mom. Like the fact that you're trying to sit up and try to act like what you do is so damn time consuming, like it's really not. It's really not. Your work is flexible. It's very flexible. They, I, a bit, I used to do videos on my lunch breaks at work. That's how flexible your job is. I do videos when I go home to visit my people's and stuff down to Virginia. I still have time to carry my laptop or carry my phone with me, get up under the Wi-Fi and pull out a video. But you trying to sit up there and act like it's so damn time consuming and you don't know how to do this. And you So much so that now you about to uproot your mama to come in. Your mama would be a damn fool to do it. Because if I was your mama, I'd be like, girl, you done lost your rabbit ass mind. I'm not about to sit over here and raise your chair. And I don't raise mine. Nick, get out my door, bitch. All right. And close my door when you leave. That's what I would have told you if I was your mama. Your mama is a damn fool if she uproot her life to come in and, 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 and raise your kids. For you to sit up and frolic along with, 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 with the ladies of Married to Medicine because that's all the hell you doing to let me tell. Like, you so damn sorry. Like, that that pissed me off. Like, I, 
girl and talk about some you getting all of these uh, uh emails and and stuff like hey, bitch anyway mo- miss me anywho so dr contessa talking to her trainer about her dad passe moving on Audra goes to see Dr. He- no shade, Dr. Contessa, but other than this shit with Heavenly, you're just not that interested. <laughs> you're not that interested. Like, I really don't care about this body fitness thing that you got going on. I, I really don't. That's not that don't tickle my fancy. Your trainer and them big, them big ass bell arms he got tickle my fancy. But this storyline about that, I, I don't care, girl. Anyway, I mean, I like you, Dr. Cassette says, no shade, but other than what you got with Dr. Heavily, you're boring. Anyway. And your daughter bad as hell. Your daughter bad as hell. And I know people get get sensitive when it comes to calling people chair bad, but that little motherfucker bad. All right, she bad. Couldn't have been me and my mama. Anywho. Especially at their age. I know you lying. Y'all love sharing these days. Child, y'all know how good y'all got it. Because let me tell you something. I was raised old school. Anyway, um, Audra goes to see Dr. Heavily. I almost went off on a tangent. So Audra talks about Dr. Contessa and, you know, well, she talks to her because obviously she heard what happened with the intervention and all that stuff. And Dr. Heavenly, you know, still feels a way about her team and up with her adversaries. Listen, I give Dr. Heavenly a lot. I'm not going to act like Dr. Heavenly's feelings aren't valid either. They are. But at the end of the day, you made it that way, Dr. Heavenly. You made it easy for her to team up with your adversaries, people that you don't like. You did. Because whether that was her storyline or not, you're still sitting up here saying she was my real friend. She was my real friend. So that's her point. Why would you even do that to her if that's your real friend? If that's your real friend, your real friend isn't expecting you to just, you know, run down on her marriage or say how you feel or whatever about her marriage on your YouTube channel. Like, whatever. I don't care. It is what it is. All right. Dr. Contessa has the right to feel away. Um, and Dr. Heavily does have a right to feel away because of Contessa going to team up with her adversaries, even though Heavily opened the door for her to do that when she did that messy ass shit. But whatever. Two wrongs don't make a right. Both y'all wrong. All right. Both y'all wrong. Contessa, you no shade, Contessa. I've been having your back. But I do understand what people are saying and where they're coming from, too, when it comes to you, because to let the people tell it, you wasn't mad beforehand. So why are you mad now? Much the, the people say the people came, the people, they told me you stop that contestant. Listen. All right. Listen. You, you, and you listen good. The people told me about you, contestant. The people ran down the timeline. And I kind of agree with the people. When Dr. Heavily was saying much of the same stuff, when you and uh, Scott, I think his name was, is going through it, you agree with it all. You agree with all of it and you didn't mind her being your mouthpiece. So now all of a sudden that you and him are deciding to work it out, my opinion, he boxed your ass into a corner and, to, and, and you know, basically making you work it out. Now you got such a problem with it. Now you got to throw in your coochie lips. And, and, and that ain't cool, Contessa, is not. You won't mad about it then, so don't be mad about it now. No shade. Because I, I feel where you're coming from when it comes with Heavenly, but I, I, I'm not going to sit over here and act like I don't understand where the people coming from either. Moving on. So then Dr. Contessa does admit that Heavenly did text her, but... You know, her issue with Heavily is she likes to embarrass you in public, but wants to apologize in private and she just doesn't trust her or whatever. I mean, listen, there can be apologies to go around, Contessa. All right. Because while I feel where you're coming from on Dr. Heavily, when she was your mouthpiece and when y'all was on the outs, you didn't mind her doing that. So it's like, you know, you can't have it both ways. I feel where you're coming from with her, but you got to cut your shit too, friend. Anyway, 
Um, so they go to Las Vegas or whatever, and you know, Dr. Jackie and Dr. Simone got the presidential suite, honey. Okay, and it is just fabu. I live for it. Um, uh, Dr. Jackie in this whole bed situation about wanting to be in the presidential suite. I don't know. Maybe she was just drunk. Maybe she was just drunk and trying to break the ice with Simone and genuinely trying to have a good time. I will say that. I I, I do feel like Heavenly is trying to genuinely have a good time. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, I see what they was doing there. At least her and Dr. Simone know what it is. So it is what it is. And I let them have it, I guess. But in my opinion, her ass was drunk. So speaking of being drunk, Anala wants to play Never Have I Ever. And here comes Contessa saying, well, the only way that, could, that can happen is people got to be transparent. You know, people ain't transparent like us and such and such and such. And I'm like, Dr. Contessa, Contessa, don't ruin the moment, Miss Girl. All right. Please don't ruin the moment. All right. We all know who you was talking about and who you was talking about. Know what you was talking about. Like I said, if the shoe fit, wear it. Dark's been hitting a lot of holes lately, but whatever. Anyway, they played Never Have I Ever. I mean, I guess it was cute, I suppose. Um, but why did Toya come for Audra the way she did? About like trying to get her to put her law degree to use and stuff like that. And my thing is, Toya, you got big damn nerve because people came under my comments saying the same thing about your ass, that they wish that you was put your uh, teaching degree to use and all of the rest of this stuff. Like, bitch, you tried it. I really didn't like that at all. Like, you are an unaccomplished bitch sitting up here telling a woman who has accomplished something in life what they need to put it to good use and this, this, that, and this. Like, girl, Audra would be crazy to sit up and go back and forth with you because bitch, you're nothing. Like, if you don't go and sit your ass down somewhere, you sitting up at all this tax debt and all this and all of that and, 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 and living off the checks you getting from this show, but you want to sit over here and come for this woman who's actually somebody... Bitch, please. <laughs> you got damn nerves. Look, Audra better to be because I'd have cussed your ass out professionally. All right. I'd have gave you an old nasty Wimby read from Real Housewives of Potomac. I'd have gave you one of her one of them reads that she gave Ashley. Bitch, that shit pissed me off for. I won't even dead. She won't even talk to me. I was mad. Um, what else? Jackie don't do shit. All right, because she, you know, she just girl, she don't drink, she don't smoke, she don't 69, she don't have threesomes, she don't suck her husband dick. Like, good Lord, Jesus. Jackie, you must be Kojic. <laughs> Jackie, you must be Kojic. That's what I think it is. Dr. Jackie, excuse me. Let me give you your proper moniker. Dr. Jackie, you must be Kojic because you don't do nothing. Dear God Almighty. And Dr. Contessa saying that she don't have threesomes and Dr. Heavenly and Quad called bullshit in the confessionals. And I thought that was hilarious. I think it's bullshit too, Contessa. No shade. Dr. Contessa, excuse me. No shade. Um, Quad done cheated on, on her man before. Mm -hmm. Nah. I'm gonna let you alone, Quad, because I, I like I, I like you, Quad. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna let you alone. I ain't gonna get on that. And Quad also don't like getting random dick pics to her phone. And I get it. I get it. Like from from a from a perspective of I never met you before. You've never said anything to me. We've never had a conversation nowhere in America. And you think the way to break the ice with me is to send me a dick pic. Don't get me wrong. Yeah, I'm gonna look at it. But I ain't going to respond to your thirsty ass. <laughs> but that's just me. Quad trying to act like she don't look at it. She don't do nothing. Girl, I know you lying because you ain't got no man nowhere around it, girl. Yes, you do. You look at them dick pics and you pluck your click to it. It's okay, Quad. You put you put the rose 
where the roles need to go and you look at them picks and you go to town, honey. But what you don't do is respond to them. I'm not mad at Acquire. You classy. You classy. I totally get Acquire, but you sit over there trying to act like them random dick picks don't tickle your fancy. Girl, bye. So, anywho, child, that's it. That's all I got. The episode was fair. You know, yeah, it gives what every other show gives when they about to go on a trip, you know, mediocre. But um, y'all drop down in the comments and y'all let me know what y'all think about it. I'm about to get the hell up out of here. But um, like I said, I don't know about the laugh tonight. It might be a laugh. It might not. But I might just put both of the shows together, whether it's a laugh or pre-recorded. So y'all know. But yeah, be on the lookout. And um, that's it. That's all I got. I'm gone. Bye.